today's episode is sponsored by uh, Pride. It's Pride Month. Did you know? I did. I had I did. no idea. Are you joking? Yes. <laughs> okay, great. Um, here we are yet again. It's like um, what could you compare this to? Hmm. I don't know. There's nothing quite like Pride, huh? No. What are you doing for Pride, Julie? I don't know. I haven't gone to Pride Weekend in a couple years now, Mm -hmm. which is sad. I still love it so much. Uh I'm just not built for going out anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you mean? It's 2 a.m. Why are we still outside? (laughs) (laughs) 2 a.m.? Yeah, I'm like an old lady now. That's when the night begins. Oh, Jesus. I envy you. No, I can't do that. Are you going either. to Pride Weekend? Oh my God, absolutely not. Mm. <laughs> I'm not doing a goddamn thing for Pride. Right. Existing. That's Existing. what we're doing for Pride. How about that? That is my gift. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, do you know how difficult it is to get an Uber out of West Hollywood? On a regular night? No. Yeah. No. Actually. Yeah, Pride um, is wild. Yeah, no. Um, Alex Christian and I were supposed to go to uh, to the first night of We Hope Pride, the concert that they had, because it was free. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And we never made it off the couch. So. I love that for you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a whole, you got to emotionally prepare yourself to get into that mindset of being around so many people and navigating the streets. And, and gay people, so many gay, safely, gay people, so many gay people. <laughs> well, worst kind of people in the entire world. <laughs> we used to go all the time, though, remember? We went like a couple years in a row. Um, I crazy. actually. Did I go a couple years in a row? Yeah, it must have been you. I've been before, but you typically, because, you know, L.A. only used to do one Pride. Um, mm-hmm. And then We Hope Pride was created. And then L.A. Pride yeah. is a whole nother thing. So um, there are, and, and it always used to be, L.A. Pride always used to be the weekend of my mother's birthday. Um, mm. So I typically I usually made it out maybe once, but a lot of the time, right? Not too many times. Um, and then, um, and then they said, "Well, we're gonna have WeHo Pride, and then there's LA Pride," um, mm-hmm. which you know it's all the same thing at this point, right? Um, right. So yeah, there we go. There we go. Pride, Pride. P-R-I-D-E. Welcome to Yumi and Cheese your number one source for cheese on the internet. Adrian and Julie here. Julie, Julie, Julie. How are you? Hi. I'm good. How are We're, you? You know, living, laughing, loving. I love that. Love that for you. Um, we have made it halfway through the year, which is quite shocking to me. Same. How quickly time is going by we're halfway That's through crazy. 2023 um yeah. we're halfway to 2024 there's a presidential election in 2024 oh, i mean well, how funny is that <laughs> not very i not very at all it's just so not very. funny anyone else freaking out it's so funny yeah. to me at how quickly time is zoom zoom zooming on by yeah it's crazy it's so crazy it's i wonder i i don't remember when i was younger feeling like time was going by quickly i wonder if this is a thing that happens when you get older and i don't know yeah because your life is filled with so much more now yeah. It's so crazy. When I was younger, I remember feeling like 
it's been January for the last four months. Like just, we're still here trucking on by. A lot of the time you only had school to go by. And now you have work and bills and birthdays and weddings Mm. and, um, you know. And death. And death. And death. When you get older, babies. Death is knocking on the doorstep. I mean, people are dying all the time. People are dying all the time. But when you get older, it's rough. It really is. It really, really is. Ooh. Death. I agree. Um. Okay. Wonderful. What do you don't have anything going on in your life? Um, I met Hosier. Oh my god! Not once, but twice. Twice. Well, what happened? Are you guys engaged? We're we are to be married. Um, I can't wait personally. Um, he's lovely. Uh, the amoeba meet and greet was quick and painless. The Long Beach meet and greet, besties, that was painful. It was four hours to get to him. Four hours to get to him. You, you waited in line for four hours. Yes. But everybody had a ticket? Everyone had a ticket. Why did you wait in line for four hours? Well, here's the thing. Once we got inside, you know, because a lot of the waiting was outside in the sun. But Hosier, lovely man that he is, did send out popsicles for everyone to consume popsicles because it was hot as balls. Uh huh. I'm curious why. Like, because it was hot. No, I know, but like, um, everybody who had a ticket was going to meet him, right? Uh huh. Uh huh. Was there, did he perform? No, it was just a meet and greet. I guess I'm just wondering, the, there was a long line because people got there early. Is that right? Or, or were they late? A lot of people were getting there. No, a lot of people were getting there like at three. I got there at 3.30. The line was already long, but the line was still even longer. And what time me. were you told to show up? The thing start. the event started at four. So you got there at 3.30 and mm-hmm. it was supposed to start at 4. And you, at, when you got there at 3.30, you still waited four more hours. So you didn't get inside until 4.30, 5.30, 6.30, 7.30? Well, I got inside the building at around 6. Two and a half hours after you got there, you got into the... And what building is this? Where are we? The record store, Fingerprints Record Store in Long Beach. So we got in the building and then the line still like wove within the aisles of the record store to get to him. And he was in the back of the record store. Once we got inside and we could see him, we quickly realized why it was taking so long and it was that he's a lovely human being and he was giving everyone plenty of time to interact with him. I see. The amoeba so- one felt very like in and out, <laughs> get the fuck away from him kind of uh-huh. thing. Like very, take your picture by, take your picture by. And like this one, which I, I almost didn't go to it because I was like, well, I already got my amoeba. I won't go to this one. But I was like, no, I'm going to do it. And so I mm-hmm. went four hours so so it did start at four it started exactly at four yes it just he was talking to he was talking to people yeah. so he was thoroughly engaged mm-hmm. okay that's fine yeah i know i was like i was reaching impatient levels uh-huh. and and then when i saw that he was like engaging with people and giving them space to like interact with him i was Uh like i can't even be mad or frustrated right Right. you know i'm starving my feet hurt my back hurts i'm like it's fine we just gotta push through and of course when i got up to him he was a lovely i'm like you know what sir you take however much time but you could tell in between people like he was drained 
I mean, how many how many people do you think were there to see him? I don't know. It had to be like two hundred, two hundred and fifty, maybe. Well, who made that mistake? Well, that's what we were talking about in the line that this amoeba very much felt like there was a specific amount of tickets available. This one, a lot of people were like, it felt like a you could just buy pre-order the vine because you didn't have to go into the store for this one you could pre-order it online uh -huh. and then show up to the thing and a couple of people in line had gotten emails like your order's pending we don't know if we're gonna approve it yet blah 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 but then later they got emails like yes so i think the record store maybe let them pre-order too many uh-huh because it felt like a, a lot it was a lot of people it was a lot of people how many I mean, people it was... would you say were at amoeba maybe like a hundred maybe uh -huh. hmm that man sat there for four well well there was people behind so many people behind me still someone needs it took to get me, fired it took me four hours to get there there was still a long line after me. I would say there was still another two and a half hours worth of line after me. Absolutely not. Somebody needs yeah. to get fired. Yeah. It was crazy. Crazy. And he seemed to like only take a break to go pee and drink water. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. It was crazy. They already bought the album, sir. I know a lovely human being a lovely human being he did write my favorite lyric down for me what does that say I can't see it says you put your emptiness to melody you can see his lovely handwriting uh, oh, I don't know if it's yeah I'm gonna <laughs> sir please it's a little chicken scratchy I mean that's an artist for you uh-huh well can you show it again show it to the camera again uh you put your emptiness to melody yep always there always here mm -hmm. um and what did you two talk about i mean i what did you tell him just told him thank you i told him he was a trooper I was like, it's wild out there. You're really doing the most. I love that for you. Uh -huh. And um, what did he say? Did he like? I said, thank you. No, no. What did he, he say? Laughed. Did he like laugh? Was it like a nervous laughter? Like, ha, ha, ha. Like, yeah, because someone's about to get chopped off the team. No, he, no, he laughed like a genuine laugh. And then I turned to his, um, assuming it was his PR lady that refused to give us an interview with him. Um, I should have <laughs> called her out right then and there. No, I'm uh -huh. just kidding. But, um. I it's turned to her, her fault, by the way her fault. and I was like uh yeah it's what it's wild out there and she like gave she gave me a, a look like yes yes it is <laughs> yes it is wild she's like um, yes I then, know Julie I'm the one who fucked it up thank you right, for reminding him right and then I asked him if he I was like I know you're trying to power through people do not feel bad about declining my request but could you write a lyric down for me and he was like absolutely do not worry about it and he's like what were you thinking and then i told him the the quote and then he wrote it for me and then he was like is that okay and uh -huh. i was like it's perfect do you want to make out um uh -huh. and that was it and then we took a picture and he was like it was lovely meeting oh he asked me for my name uh -huh. which was nice um and did you give him your then... government name or did you give him your hollywood <laughs> name no i just said it was juliana that's mm. my name uh -huh. um and yeah it was it was nice it was lovely. Lovely. He's a lovely human. He's a lovely human for doing this in general. Uh -huh. Lovely human to see that he like, even with the line as it was, he had to know at some point that the line was like excruciatingly long because mm. they sent out popsicles for everyone waiting outside. Mm -hmm. So he had to know like these people are probably dying in the heat. They've been standing for hours. I'm going to give him a little treat. So he sent out popsicles. So I know Becky eat. from Sleep PR had to run herself over to Walgreens <laughs> to get those damn Absolutely. popsicles. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Wow. I have a coworker yeah. who is obsessed with Hoisier. Mm. Mm. Hoisier? Hoiser? Sir? 
It's Hoser. Yeah, you're Hoser. right. Hoser. No, Hosier. Oh. Hosier. Well, now, now it doesn't even sound like a word. You know what oh, I'm saying no. over and over? God. Um, and I can't remember if she said if she was going to this or not. Mm-hmm. But I guess she could have gotten tickets because it seems like everybody else did. Yeah, it was a lot. Um, wow. Four, you waited four hours. Yeah, I don't know how I did it either. I, it didn't even feel like a lot until we got inside and I could see him. And then it felt excruciating because he's like right there and the line was moving very slow. And you could see how long it was taking him to interact with every person. Uh-huh. And like people were asking him to make videos. People were taking multiple pictures. They would take like the picture that the girl takes and then they would take selfies. Like uh-huh. it was a lot asking mm-hmm. him to pose a certain way mm-hmm. so girl proposed to him. oh my god thank god my back was to the situation when it happened because the secondhand embarrassment in me i would have left the venue right then and there mm-hmm. i would have been like you know what i can't do this anymore um yeah so it's a lovely lovely person i know that he went home had an ice cold beer and just yeah. winked one big old <laughs> load out of his big old dick. <laughs> you don't think that's what he did when he got home? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> uh huh. I'm sure he did. I don't, what else would he do? <laughs> I don't know. Sleep? I mean, interacting with people for over four hours. Oh my god! I could, yeah, this, I that's how it. he like. That's how he had. <laughs> that's how he came down. You know? oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, good for only him. one way to find out. Hoisier. Yeah. Come on the pod. We want to know what you did after your appearance in Long Beach. Yeah. And you didn't go to the Troubadour show, by the way, which was last week as well, right? It also feels like that didn't need to be brought up. Oh, but so... I'm glad that you did. I guess. Uh huh. I just want I just want him to know that so right. that he can give you tickets for the next one. I know. Yeah, I did not go to the Troubadour show. I have watched every single video posted online about it and cried myself to sleep because I wasn't there. It looked like a phenomenal performance. Of course, it did, and um. I also don't have tickets to the Hollywood Bowl performance, so. When is he's doing? Is he doing? Well, his... he's going on t- on like an actual tour. Other he's than he's doing his appearances. own show at the Hollywood mm-hmm. Bowl, which I agree. Doesn't feel like the venue for him. We uh-huh. talked about it in the line with a girl that had tickets to the Hollywood Bowl. I was uh-huh. like, it does feel like the venue for Hosier Troubadour will turn. Not that he's not, not that he's not, what's the word, like, um, capable of filling up a venue like the Hollywood Bowl. He clearly is. The fucking show sold out. The point is that his music feels like more intimate than that. Right. I mean, I don't think anybody should be performing at the Hollywood Bowl if it's not um the orchestra because i was also saying like yeah the musical numbers feel like the only thing that you get a proper this is really sold out this man sold out the hollywood bowl he sold out every single tour date i think he has one in madison square garden he sold out every single tour date what (laughs) I don't mean that in the sense of like, I mean, that one little song really took him all the way. Yeah. Take me to church. Take me to the ball, bitch. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. He is in high demand. That is so fascinating to me. Okay. Wow. Wow. Truly. I agree. I agree. No wonder they didn't give us the interview. I agree. <laughs> Man. 
you know what though he he doesn't feel as massive as he is you know what i mean doing these record store meet and greets doing these small shows at the troubadour like it feels like he's still trying to stay kind of indie even with his massive audience but Mm -hmm. well if he really wanted to stay indie Uh, that's what i'm saying at the damn record store i know i was thinking that too but i was like how would that have worked imagine he'd have to do a whole meet and greet and then he'd have to then we'd all have to wait for him to get through the entire line so he could perform oh my god absolutely not absolutely not yeah no sorry about it i'm not doing that I was like, yeah, no, I'll just take the meeting. It's fine. You don't have to perform. And the album doesn't come out until August. August, yeah. Also, I find it's interesting because he already sold out his tour, and yet mm-hmm. he's doing promo as if no one's going to buy this album. Which is why I think he's a wonderful human being. I really think it is about getting out there and just meeting his fans. I don't think it has anything to do with the album. Well, you do have to pre-order the album, but at the end of the day, I don't think it really does, though. Because his tour is sold out, I think that's a clear indication that his album is going to do great numbers because people are already purchasing tour tickets. So. His website only has his Europe, um, oh no, yeah, it only has only has his Europe shows and then a couple of festivals, but it doesn't have his, I want to see what I have... he's performing. I'm on his PR list, so I get all of the, in all of his, like, single announcements and stuff, at the end of the emails, they'll send the tour dates, and all next to all of the shows, it's, like, sold out, sold out, sold out, so. Well, Hoisier, congratulations. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, you know what I was thinking about the other day? Tell me. Do you think Candace talks in an Irish accent now? No. Oh, well, well, it's not the funniest thing to ask. Madonna had a British accent when she lived in the UK. So yeah, I was just only wondering, ridiculous people do that. I don't think it's the most absurd thing to ever think about. Like you kind of, like you start to like pick up on on I mean, sure. I mean, she'll say like phrases uh-huh. that are Irish. Uh-huh. Like, so she's picked up on their, like, slang. Mm-hmm. But I had a FaceTime call with her not too long ago and still sounds like American Candace, uh-huh. which is nice. Yeah. Uh-huh. Candace sent me a DM the other day. How dare she? You want to know what it said? Always. Hold she's on. talking shit. I want to read it <laughs> verbatim. Oh, jeez. <clears throat> <clears throat> Tell Julie. (laughs) I'm just kidding. She didn't say anything. She sent me a photo of me at Mickey's. Oh, she sent me that too. Uh Oh my God. I'm wearing the same shirt. (laughs) Amazing. That's funny. That was a Sunday brunch day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was going through old pics. LOL. Good times. Heart. Oh, I said, LOL. What a time to be alive. (laughs) <laughs> thanks candace candace i just curious if you have picked up an irish accent candace send us a voice memo to prove to adrian that you have that would it. be great candace <laughs> yeah get kieran to hop on there just for <clears throat> just for funsies and we don't think that kieran is somehow related or knows hoisier <laughs> in some kind of way and uh, we'd have to look into that they both have beautiful luscious hair they do they do although i will say i think that kieran maybe takes care of it a little bit more i agree i would agree because hoisier is kind of giving dry (laughs) no disrespect what do you think hoisier would look like with a buzz cut sad I don't know. Sad. I mean, yeah, not great. I don't think he'd look great. I think he knows that. That's why his hair is so long. I think he would look good. Really? Yeah, with a fade. I mean, the that man that man would be unstoppable. Interesting. 
Interesting. Who's your cut your hair? Let's see what happens. He's never going to cut his hair. I hope not. Until he has a midlife crisis. How old is he? Mm, I'm not sure. Hold on. I do know he's Uh, 66, though. What? He's 33 years old. Oh, I feel like I did know that. And he was born March 17th. This man is a Pisces. Interesting. Lord have mercy. Interesting. No wonder he waited in that damn line (laughs) for all those people. Oh, my God. He's a people pleaser. (laughs) That explains it all. It really does. Well, do I have this man on my Pisces playlist? I should add him. Okay. I love that you have a Pisces playlist. Yeah, I do. Okay, Hoysier. Come on the pod. Yes. Come on the pod. Um, I was going to say something to you and I completely forgot what it was. Oh, that's unfortunate. Hmm. 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 Was hmm. it about Hosier or was it about something else? No, was it, it about, about Candace? No, I already said everything I needed to say about Candace. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, do you want to mention the 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 fan mail, non-fan mail that we got a little <sighs> bit ago? In a shocking turn of events. So if you follow us on Instagram, which you should, by the way, we post on there when we're going right before we're getting, well, not right before, but before we record so that people can send us topics. We got a really good topic from D, but we're going to save that for next week. So be on the edge of your seat for that. And we also got a comment from Liz. She said, we said, what should we talk about? And she said, definitely about how Angie is a badass. Now, my first question is, does Liz know Angie? It sounds like it sounds like Angie sent her specifically to start the Angie fan club. Now, my second question, do you know Liz? Yes. Well, I don't know Liz. <laughs> but you yeah. know, but you know that I've, Liz. I've, and, I've met Liz. Yes. But you know that Liz and Angie are friends IRL. Seems suspicious to me. Hmm. Angie? Liz, look, here's the thing about Liz. How dare you let this be your first comment into the pod? Who is Liz? (laughs) Show your face, Liz. Who who is she? I'm just kidding, Liz. Um, We love Angie here. We love Angie. We'll allow you to start the Angie fan club. I so. still don't know who Liz is. <laughs> they How do you together. know her? They work together at the museum. Oh, well, thank you, Liz. Mm-hmm. Um, wait, do you think that Angie wants us talking us talking about that thing that you had mentioned earlier this week, considering people who know her listen to this? Yeah, she doesn't care. Coworkers. Yeah. Okay. I mean, what are they going to do? It's her past life. No, I know. But some, I don't know. Sometimes people don't want. Are weird about that? No, I get it. But no, she doesn't. And not even like the person themselves, like other people that know them. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, yeah. We're going to have Liz on the pod one of these days. Nope. Angie. Sorry, Angie. My God. (laughs) Liz, you can stay at home. Uh, (laughs) Angie. (laughs) But make sure you listen, Liz. Because apparently your favorite person in the world is going to be on. (laughs) Um, uh, We're going to have Angie on the pod one of these days to tell us about an old job that she had. Mm -hmm. Julie told me earlier this week, and I said (laughs) in response, this was in an audio message, in response. Okay, I'm glad that this is happening because I want to call you out on something. So, okay, go go ahead. Tell your little story. (laughs) Tell your little story. Julie and I were talking about a couple things the other day over a text in audio messages and she tells me that she w- thinks that we should have liz on the pod because liz... no angie sorry oh my god <laughs> oh my god <laughs> <laughs> too 
clear. <laughs> What's your name? We're both completely. <laughs> We're both sober. And Your it is, name is eight Julie, o'clock right? in the morning. It okay. is eight o'clock in the morning and, and Adrian's still asleep. Okay. Julie told me we were having uh-huh. a conversation over text in audio messages. And Julie says we should have Angie on the pod mm-hmm. to talk about this old career that she used to have. Which to me took me aback. I didn't know that Ju- that a- Angie had this job. Mm-hmm. And so I end the voice memo with like, and who is Angie? That's not how you said it. How did I say it? it. How did I say it? No, you said it like, who is Angie? Like that. That's how you said it. Okay. Well, to me, I was saying it in a very, (laughs) anyways, Julie then responds. It says, she, first of all, she is cracking up. And she says to me she's like you know angie she has the hot chef husband you met him at my apartment uh party that one time and i had to be like i know who angie is she works with liz uh, <laughs> i'm just kidding i didn't say that but i what i meant was like and who, uh, my apologies if it didn't come out the right way. What I meant to say was, like, who is she? Because every day I learn right. something new about Angie. I know who Angie is. Angie, I know who you are. You're right. the one employee that doesn't show up to work <laughs> at Yumi and Cheese Man. We have your mm-hmm. poster up on the wall so we remember what you look like <laughs> since you never come. Um, You said it like, who is Angie? First of all. Second of all, I have mentioned a person named Sean in at yeah. least 500 conversations. Yeah. And every single time I bring up this person, yeah. Sean, a uh, nope, Adrian says, who's Sean? Yeah. Every I, to, single to, time. To, to, today, I would not be able to tell you who the fuck Sean is. Exactly. So yeah. it was not beyond the scope of reality sure. to think that you didn't know who Angie was. Yeah. And now that this brings me to an actual great point, uh-huh. I actually want to call out eric uh-huh. angie's husband oh uh-huh who i also saw on tuesday who says and couldn't he remember your name no he oh. <laughs> oh, I didn't, but, he, but he listens to the pod uh-huh. he listens to the pod uh-huh. and he says he always has constant commentary on it yet refuses to send in a voice memo no there's a lot of people who are shy i've come to okay learn. eric this is our plea send in your voice memo we would Uh appreciate it Uh we would love to hear your commentary Uh um i I will not allow your commentary to be about angie though so keep that to yourself Uh keep the commentary about me and adrian thank Uh you um but yes uh hi eric if you're listening very lovely so remind me who Sean is again, because <laughs> I standing. don't remember. <laughs> we worked at not we, but me at we we worked at a hotel in Orange County together. Oh, right, 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 right. And I can't also remember what the relationship is. <laughs> did you guys have a thing? <laughs> no, no, no. But did you have a falling out? We did. We did. Right. Because he and screwed what... over. He, oh, he screwed over that person? Yeah. Wait, he and did? Then he... Yes, at work. How? Like he threw him under it's the bus? Whole... <laughs> it was a whole thing. I mean. W- but what did he do to you? Sh- well, it, it spiraled, you know, because we were very, we were a, a trio. And Is then... Sean, does Sean celebrate pride? No. Uh, well, oh. maybe as an ally. Who's to say? Oh. Yeah. Straight men are nasty, by the way. They're catty. <laughs> yeah, straight men are. It, it, Sean and I are fine. We, we've we re- repaired, repaired the relationship. He's done plenty of apologizing since the incident. Did he repair his relationship with that other person? No. Oh. Well. I mean, yeah. Oh, Angie, come on the pod. Come on the pod. 
Okay. Well. Okay. Everyone's warmed up. Everyone's okay. <laughs> uh, it's time for a full episode of the Pop Culture Pop Up. Uh, first up on the Pop Culture Pop Up, Julie, th- did you say that there's book TikTok drama? There is book, book TikTok talk? drama. Is that what you called it? Book talk. Yes. Book talk. What is happening? Okay. So an author on book talk her screen user her username is like sarah shoots with like three o's o's if you want to look this person up she is going to release she was going to release a book her first Mm -hmm. book sometimes what publishers will do is they will send out books before they're published to people so that they can read them and review them Mm -hmm. on goodreads before the release so that it gets a little bit of hype so she was already getting reviews on her Goodreads. She had a perfect score of five stars. Then someone came in and put, gave her a score of four stars, dropping her average. And the co- the review essentially said it was a great book, great read. The only thing was that the ending was predictable. And that's mm-hmm. why they gave it four stars. Sarah got on TikTok and- uh, Sarah's the that- author? Sarah is the author. Uh She got on TikTok and called that woman a bitch. Uh Yeah. Um. Yeah. She said, I'm paraphrasing. She says something along along the lines of, I had a perfect score on Goodreads. And then this bitch came along and gave me four stars. Four out of five is a pretty good rating for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, Mm -hmm. if I was an author and someone gave me four stars and their only criticism was, it had a predictable ending. I would call that a win. Mm-hmm. So then obviously the readers of book talk came in defense of this reviewer. This seems to be a pattern where uh-huh. authors read their reviews and then they get on TikTok and they attack the reviewers. Don't do that. Reviews are not for the author. Reviews are for other readers, but it, alas, she started getting bombarded with negative comments. Then she got on tiktok and made another video saying that it was a joke and how embarrassing that you guys can't take a joke i was joking it was a joke you guys don't understand jokes more backlash a joke everything is a joke more backlash then she gets on and she every video moving forward now has not acknowledged what's happening she's she's being very um unbothered I'm out here living my life. I don't even read comments. I don't even see. You guys are commenting. I don't see it. She posted another video saying, I have a meeting later today. I have a meeting with producers who have the rights to my book, who want to, or who want to buy the rights to my book to make it into a movie. And she was like, I, I've already talked to a couple of actresses. One of them is very interested, blah, 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 blah. Very Delulu land. Like, mm-hmm. like very, like this, this isn't happening. This mm-hmm. is not a thing that's happening. Um, And so she did that. I mean, she's been posting a lot. People have been calling her out. Then there was so much backlash that her publisher dropped her. So Ugh. she's no longer getting that book published. Wait a second, though. It's even more embarrassing because turns out this is a publisher where you can go on their site you can enter your manuscript. They can decide whether, obviously, like a regular thing, they decide whether or not they're going to publish it. If they are, if they choose you to get published, then you have to pay $9,500 so that they will get you an editor. They'll get you cover art. They'll format your manuscript. Like they'll set it all up, but you are paying for all of this out of pocket. Uh-huh. So essentially you're pay- you're paying to get published. It's not as much as like I'm getting published. No, you're paying someone to publish you. Uh-huh. So they dropped her. They said they're no longer publishing that book. They put out a tweet, uh, a series of tweets saying, you know, we're aware of the controversy surrounding this person. We are, you know, we think that readers should be respected. People should not be attacked for their opinions on a book. So we're not going to proceed with publishing the novel. She's still not acknowledging 
that anything is happening. She hasn't acknowledged that her bub- publisher dropped her. Then I think she doxed one of the people that was criticizing her. She put that person's full name in a comment. And now that person has been doxed. And I think that person's obviously very upset about it. Then someone found out that the rights to her book were were bought by her by herself. Mm-mm. So it's just a series of unfortunate events and like karma really showing its ass. Like it could you could a uh, four stars. Four stars. You had to get on there and call her a bitch. And let's say that it was a joke. Let's say that you thought your tone was funny, which it wasn't. I saw the video. It wasn't a funny tone. It didn't feel like a joke. It very much felt like I had five star rating and this bitch came in here and dropped my rating. It really felt annoyed. Let's say that that, but you meant it as a joke. It didn't land. You're getting all this backlash. Why would you not just get on there and say, my mistake, I should have caught my tone. I thought I was being funny clearly i'm the only one that did i appreciate every review i hope that other people can read my book and give you know their own rating you know you're entitled to your opinion no one no one has to love your book girl not Mm -hmm. a one person so now oh and then people were going on goodreads now her book has a rating of one point something (laughs) the average really took a took a tumble so mess I mean, how do you how do you fuck it up so horribly? Horribly. Oh, and it's not a great time to have secondhand embarrassment because every time she uploads, I feel like this is embarrassing for you. Everyone, everyone can tell that you're losing it, except for you. It seems, lady, get off the yeah, internet. Now you've lost your publisher. Now everyone knows that you're the one that bought. You didn't have a meeting with producers, girl. You were the producer. How, what was that meeting like? Up against a mirror? Like, I don't understand. Do you believe in karma? Mm-hmm. Um, my friend Christian brought this up yesterday, and he said, um, he's like, um, you know, Wendy Williams, Kathy Griffin, like, mm-hmm. that's kind of rough. And they made careers out of making yeah. fun of people. Um, right. And so, you know, Wendy Williams, she is having health issues, doesn't no longer on her show. She lost her show. Kathy Griffin, mm-hmm. I mean, what hasn't happened to that woman? Um, mm-hmm. And it made me really think, like, oh, wait, Joan Rivers you know mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. and then and then kiki palmer was on twitter the other day talking about um karma and how like she's a big mm-hmm. believer in karma anyways mm-hmm. um i've i guess i've always believed in karma but um i'm going to start taking it a little bit more seriously yeah i i also believe in karma um yeah, I believe in karma. I believe in karma. You know, we here on Yumi and Cheese, but we're not necessarily making fun of people. So we're hoping that karma doesn't bite us in the butt. We try to be nice about it. She says as she talks shit on all these rich people. Uh, I think it's different though. Sure. I think the this book lady needs to take a class in drama and in, 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 not in drama she knows enough about drama in karma yeah sh- she's got it yeah it's um it's it's really wild to watch someone be perceived a specific way and they refuse to acknowledge that like it's it's a very weird if you go on her like i don't want to say that because i'm not a doctor but if you go on her video, if you're on her current videos, it very much feels like losing the plot. She's lost more than so. the plot, sweetie. Yeah. She's lost yeah. the pot as well. Yeah. And yeah. Not the, you know, the pot of money. Anyways. <laughs> but make me write a book. 
Hmm? Right. Next up on the pop culture pop up, uh, Taylor Swift. She made a statement at her most recent concert um, yeah. about Pride. Um, I I found this um, in Chicago when she when the Eras tour was in Chicago. Um, mm-hmm. She said a couple things. Can I read them to you? Mm-hmm. She started off by saying, I'm looking out tonight. I'm seeing so many incredible individuals who are living authentically and beautifully. And this is a safe space for you. I did watch the beginning of that clip and it seemed like a little bit of a, it took her a long time, I felt, to say pride. Um, Mm -hmm. Anyways, she also said this, quote, we can't talk about pride without talking about pain. Right now and recently, there have been so many harmful pieces of legislation that have put people in the LGBTQ plus and queer community at risk. It's painful for everyone, every ally, every loved one, every person in these communities. And that's why I'm always posting, this is when the midterms are. This is when these important key primaries are. Is she? Uh, we can't we can support as much as we want during Pride Month, but if we're not doing our research on these elected officials, they are are they actually advocates? Are they allies? Are they protectors of equality? Do I want to vote for them? End quote. Julie, your thoughts. My thoughts. My thoughts are side eye major side eye mm-hmm. i mean babe it's a little too late if if there has to be backlash for you to say something i don't feel like your words land the way you mean them to mm-hmm. i don't i don't think i don't think it's genuine if if we're struggling to get you to make a statement like that you know Mm -hmm. what would have made a difference for you to get on the tennessee stage and say something when tennessee has some very intense laws Mm -hmm. against the lgbtq community Mm -hmm. so yeah when you're doing it in chicago with where it's a different space a different environment i don't think it lands especially after the week's of people demanding you do something and begging you to do something Mm -hmm. yeah it's crazy it just it doesn't land i don't know if she has very many gay friends no i think she lost the one (laughs) todrick i don't think she lost him i think she she fired him (laughs) yeah yeah she dropped him yeah huh interesting yeah, yeah, it, it it didn't. I mean, I'm not one to say anything because, you know, my thoughts about um, Taylor Swift, but it yeah. didn't feel genuine to me. It felt very, mm-hmm. um, I have to say this. Yeah. So here I am. Yeah. And here's a scrumble mumble. You know. Here you go, guys. Right. Whether she can. Um, write a song i'm not going to debate that right now what i feel like is that she may not necessarily be the most intellectual person in the room Mm. in the sense i disagree only in the sense that like i don't know or maybe she just isn't familiar with this topic it just didn't feel i don't think that it's intellect as much as it's ignorance and her lack of investing in that right i guess i just didn't feel from being this prolific songwriter that this really had much of any substance right but i think but i think that has more to do less to do with her ability to create a powerful statement and more to do with the fact that she doesn't care to create a powerful statement it was it was very much of like all right here you go you mm-hmm. wanted me to say something i'm going to i'm going to say it mm-hmm. it wasn't passionate mm-hmm. she's not talking about scooter braun fucking her over so she's not going to do something that's going to be impactful and rally her fans she's going to just say 
all right, you wanted me to say something? Here you go. I'm going to say the first thing that comes to my mind about this. The easiest, most, I mean, it's a very simple, common sense statement. You can't overanalyze it because it's very simple. Yeah. That scooter line was very good. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to leave it there. Um, next up on the pop culture pop-up, um, <clears throat> there's a rapper named Chica. Um, you know, she did a song with Jojo. hmm Yeah. Uh, and Chica was on a plane and did she tweet something out? Is that what happened? She did. She, she tweeted did. something out about some crying babies. What did she say, Julie? What happened? She did. She put together. Oh, no. Hold on. Wait a minute. I don't have the fucking screenshots. <clears throat> I'll tell you what I know about Chica. No, she... I do. Sorry. Oh, go oh, ahead. Yeah. No, you tell me. Well, I was just going to say she she's a rapper. <clears throat> um, And I've read some of her tweets in the past about her dealing with her mental health. Um, And she's very open about those struggles. And putting yeah. it out on Twitter and stuff. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So she was sitting next to a crying baby and proceeded to get on Twitter. Could have been the group chat. Could have been the group chat. But she went to Twitter instead. And she said, to the lady next to me who thought it would be a good idea to buy yourself and your twin infants first class seats on a red eye flight who just woke me up by bringing your screaming bastard to our seats to soothe her. I just bought $34 of what $34 Wi-Fi at 4 a.m. to call you a stupid bitch. P.S. I hate you and hope you get a paper cut between each finger tomorrow, you senseless wench. Oh, like, my God. Yeah. Like, are you literally mentally delayed? What makes you think a one-year-old will shut their bitch ass up on a seven-hour flight that takes off at one fucking a.m.? You already had them up past bedtime. I don't care the circumstance. Take your ass to economy, at least. Vile. So clearly there was a backlash. Um, Unfortunately, Chica has a history of saying something getting backlash saying i'm suicidal and my mental health is struggling so y'all watch your words because you don't know who's struggling with what when you say right so she has a history of doing this she posted one tweet i i responded to it because i thought it was a little funny because she said you know you guys are saying some vile things and silly me for thinking i could just be frustrated and tweeting into the void And my tweet was, imagine getting on a platform with 158,000 followers and thinking you're tweeting into the void. You're not tweeting into the void. You're tweeting at your platform full of people with opinions and a brain and their own Twitter that can reply to you. You're not tweeting into a void. Then, this is a couple of days ago, she got off Twitter. She she said, I'm deleting the app because y'all are driving me crazy kind of. Then turns out, you're not going to believe this, because the world, let me tell you something about the world. It's small. Turns out the kids that were crying in that first first class seats were tiny. You know, T.I.'s T.I.'s wife, they were mm-hmm. Tiny's grandchildren. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I'm going to read you something. It says... <laughs> This was found under Chica's Instagram in one of her pictures as a comment. Mm -hmm. This is not by Tiny. It says, you stupid ass bitch. That was me you were sitting next to. So let me enlighten your dumb ass. Let me enlighten you dumb hoe. Okay. They weren't twin one-year-olds. One was my four-year-old and the other crying baby you're referring to was my niece, Sonique. Sonique's baby and she is two years old you're upset because she woke up for three minutes crying out her sleep like most fucking children and I did immediately calm her by holding her and talking to her because it was dark as hell 
I can't believe you are that insensitive when she woke up once on a five hour flight from LA. And second off, it wasn't, it wasn't your seat from the beginning. You switched with someone else and sat your fat ass next to me. And let me express the funk that you brought on top of that. Crazy shit was, it was you in my ear saying those girls are so good before she woke up out her sleep, scared, crying because it was pitch black and her TV had gone off. So she was startled. I appreciate all the things you wish for me. And I can't wait to see your ass again in person, bitch. You just mad a woman and two children could afford first class next to a peasant such as yourself. You a fake bitch in person. This is awesome. It me. is it is quite the time to fuck around and find out. It is quite the time to find out just how tiny the internet is. I mean I mean, yeah. I mean, I I'm not a fan of people who um who are gonna complain about uh, crying children on an airplane, because listen, I don't want to hear it either. But no, I'm. But what the fuck? I mean, what? As an adult, you cry whenever you want. Yeah, and you can express yourself. Right, children. I have a very hard babies what a two and a four-year-old have a very hard time expressing what it is that finds them in a frustrating state when and you- not only that i can understand being fr- like getting on twitter and being like oh shit i had crying babies next to me the whole fucking flight and that was fucking annoying her tweet was not that her tweets were like vile very very and also you there is an understanding when you are getting on a plane when you're getting on any shared space, then it's, you know, like, what? Yeah. Fly, fly private. Yeah. And if you can't afford it, then, I don't know, drive. Stay your ass at home, I guess. Get on a boat. Damn. Oh. That's, oof. Next up on the Pop Culture Pop-Up, um, Variety does their actor's on is it actors on actors mm-hmm, is that mm-hmm. uh series uh and they just released photos of the new um um uh, series uh, the new set of interviews that are going to happen it basically actors interview each other we have mm-hmm. steven yoon and uh pedro pascal you have natasha leon and melanie L- linsky you have Megan Fahey and Elizabeth Olsen. You have Jennifer Garner and Cheryl Lee Ralph. You have Jenna Ortega and Al Fanning. Mm-hmm. And most importantly, you have Ellen Pompeo and Katherine Heigl. Bitch. Now, oh, no. I don't know who made this happen. An angel. But I want them on the pod. I want to know how this came to fruition. Yeah. If you all don't remember, Ellen Pompeo and Catherine Heigl were both stars of um, Grey's Anatomy Anatomy. at the very Mm -hmm. beginning. Ellen Pompeo plays Meredith Grey. Um, Catherine Heigl played Izzy Stevens. Stevens. Mm-hmm. around season four maybe is that right four. season three season four after after four after four Catherine Heigl infamously infamously said um I'm taking my hat out of the running for an Emmy because I don't think that the writing was up to par mm-hmm. and kind of made a whole stink about it and you know basically was not the nicest person on the on the set. Didn't have a gr- good reputation. Um, she ended up leaving the show. Uh, well, she got written off the show. Yeah, she got fired. Yeah. Um, m- my thought is that she thought she was going to become the next Julia Roberts. Yes. Um, and then that didn't happen. She, you know, the thing is, she was on track. 
she was she on could track. Have. Yeah. And what fucked her up was her mouth. Right. The her statement about Grey's Anatomy spiraled into her movie work. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you talk shit about writers, baby. Who do you think is writing your movies, dumbass? But anyway, so she did that. And then, you know, she was getting uh she was talking shit on knocked up and talking shit on her rom-com with uh, gerard gerard butler i forget the name of it the truth something about the truth um so she was becoming known as this difficult person to work with and then journalists were coming forward and saying she's the worst person i've ever interviewed she's Mm -hmm. worse she's like the worst interaction is with Catherine. so her reputation really took a turn for the worst which is really sad considering she t- fully was on track to become the rom-com darling. I mean, she mm-hmm. was uh, getting them out back to back to back to back. I mean, 27 Dresses is quite the popular movie. It's still iconic, right. even with her. So, so yeah, she made those comments about season four, which, you know what, granted, was it not the best season? Mistakes were made. Would I have done that? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But so then Shonda, of course, the petty bitch that she is, said, you think that was bad? I'm going to give you cancer and I'm going to make you hallucinate your dead boyfriend. Cool. Um, And then wrote her off at the end of that chaotic journey. Mm -hmm. Almost killed her. Did she die on the show? She dies for a couple minutes. (laughs) <laughs> no, she wa- she leaves. Uh-huh. Then season 19, 18, 19, Karev uh-huh. leaves the show. Karev, Justin uh-huh. Chambers, I think his name is. He also leaves the show. And his storyline is that Izzy wrote him saying, I had your baby. <gasps> and that's why he leaves. Li- Girl, it was a whole mess. It's a whole mess. It is a whole mess. People were pissed, pissed about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mind you, they, the entire, for years, they've been building up this storyline with Karev and that other one that I I, I don't particularly Joe. love. Joe. Mm-hmm. And he leaves her high and dry for mm. Izzy. Now, did Catherine Heigl and Ellen Pompeo fight? Do we know anything about that? I don't think that they fought, but I think, you know, she's the lead of the show. I'm sure she probably took it very personal when mm-hmm. all, all this stuff was happening. Mm-hmm. Um, here's what I think. Do I think they'll really breach into some serious things? I think maybe Catherine Heigl will try, but I think if we're being honest, if we're going to be honest, if we're going to have a serious conversation, I think mm-hmm. Ellen Pompeo is part of the problem. Now, let me tell you something. I've heard on multiple occasions that Ellen Pompeo is nuts. Nuts, Oh, I totally believe that. Oh, I totally believe that. Nuts, nuts, nuts. I was at an event one time and she walked the red carpet and she she said something to the photographers who were taking photos of of the stars on the red carpet. Um, And they did not like what she had to say. And she, I mean, they were saying, they were saying things about her. Oh, I believe that. Yeah. She seems to have a very particular energy. Mm -hmm. That could often come off the wrong way. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't think, that's why I don't think her and Sandra O like each other. I could see that. Yeah. I could see that. I could totally see that. So I do. I I think Ellen Pompeo is a part of the problem. Mm-hmm. I do think she's a part of the problem and a, a part of the culture that was a little toxic around Grey's Anatomy. Mm-hmm. I do think that that's true. Um, so do I think that we're going to get some insightful information? I don't think so. I think maybe Catherine will try to speak her piece and like, let it be known that maybe yeah, because she's she wants to rehabilitate her image yeah so she's trying to find any opportunity to be like let me talk about this so that we could like you know and she's been trying to rehabilitate for years yeah. 
just a couple years ago she was like i would go back to gray's anatomy if they asked me to and yeah. shonda was like nobody's gonna ask you too big <laughs> <laughs> no you that ship has sailed girly yeah. it, no we're not gonna ask you to do that yeah so hmm. crazy mm. yeah. well i can't wait to watch when does this come on Okay, so they did release the schedule. So Jennifer Coolidge and Jeremy Allen White, June fifth. Wait, Ellen they Pompeii. release them? Oh, they don't all release them at once. No, no, that's so annoying. Ellen Pompeo and Catherine Heigl on the sixth. Jenna Ortega, Jenna Ortega, L. Fanning seven. Diego Luna, Hay- Hayden Christensen, June eighth. Kieran Culkin and Claire Danes. We could have done better with this pairing. June 9th, Jennifer Gardner and Cher- Cheryl Lee Ralph. I'm very excited for this. June 10th, Elizabeth Olsen and Megan Fahey. Fah- 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 June 11th, Pedro Pascal and Stephen Yoon. June 12th, Brian Cox and Emily Blunt. June 13th, Theo James and Brett Goldstein. June 14th, Natasha Leone and Melina- Melanie Linsky. June 15th, Jason Siegel, Ali Wong. I hate this pairing. June 16th, and Rachel... Rachel Wise and Taryn Egerton, June seventeenth. Meanwhile, all you get here is Julie on Adrian. Okay. Next up on the pop culture pop up, uh, Succession has come to an end. Now, I'm still watching season one of Succession. By the way, oh goddamn. Uh, but Julie, tell us your thoughts. I can't. Uh-huh. <laughs> my thoughts are perfect. Uh-huh. My thoughts are no notes. My mm-hmm. thoughts are epic television writing, epic television performances. I don't know a better show that had wonderful all the seasons. Mm-hmm. wonderful writing wonderful growth wonderful everything this last season of television was phenomenal television writing i cannot emphasize that enough here in colkin the man that you are he outdid himself in this season outdid himself i at the be- when successions season four four started four five jesus when this last season started I watched the first episode of this last season. I was obsessed with that. I went into work. We talk about movies and TV all the time at work. I was like, who watched it? Everyone's like, what show? And I was like, are you kidding me, everyone? Convinced all three of the male managers in my office to start watching it. That day, they all caught up in record time. It was actually alarming. Alarming. That by the finale, we had all watched. We were all up to date by the finale. Um, we love men who listen in this house. So I said, watch Succession. And they all they all stayed up late at night on weekends to catch up enough to do catch up to the finale. They do. Every single one of them have families and babies. And Michael, oh, I almost said his last name out loud. Um, one of them, he, uh, he stayed up past mid- midnight to watch the finale so we could talk about it. Um, the next week at work so we love men who take advice and they listen and um it's appreciated and it was it was great it was a great season of television if you have yet to watch succession look guys i understand the first couple of episodes are a a slow they're slow to get into but once you realize that at the root of this show is a comedy it is a comedy at the root of the chaos and the destruction is a comedy. You're going to love it. You're going to find it so amazing. And this last season, phenomenal performances. I can't emphasize that enough. It was, it was glorious. I went and what I went and watched the finale again. It's perfect. Do you guys have a company directory? <laughs> I don't know. What do you mean you don't Jeez. know? Like you can't like I mean, look up. Oh like yeah, you... we do. We do. we have that. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. So did you ever try looking for that man that I sent you? That screenshot of Mm-mm. that man. I didn't even think about that. That's dumb. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm sorry. I sent Julie a um screenshot of a man that I saw on Tinder, and it said that he worked at her place of work. And I said, "Do you know this man?" And she said, "No." 
Which is wild that he would put that on his Tinder. <laughs> because they they're really in like they really harp on to maybe not put that on your mm. social media stuff. Interesting. Um, I deleted my Tinder anyway, so it's fine. Oh. But I'd be, still be curious to know who this is and what he does. Okay. I'll look Anyways, into that. um, listen, slowly but surely, I'm going to get through succession. I just watched the part where they took Tom on his bachelor party in that underground uh-huh. train thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Rich people are so weird. Rich people are weird. But good for them. Yeah. Finally, on the pop culture pop up, after 19 seasons, um, Padma Lachmi is leaving Top Chef. She says, after much soul searching, I have made the difficult decision to leave Top Chef. Having completed a glorious 20th season as host, she was not the host the first season, uh, an executive producer, I am extremely proud to have been part of building such a successful show and of the impact it has had in the worlds of television and food. After 17 years, many of the cast and crew are like family to me, and I will miss working alongside them dearly. It feels it's time to move on and need to make space for Taste the Nation, my books and other creative pursuits. I am deeply thankful uh, to all of you for so many years of love and support. Sincerely, Padma. Um... Oh, sorry. Christian was just calling me. Christian, uh, I'm recording. He's going to love this when he hears this. Um, <laughs> let me tell you something. I love Top Chef. I watch it every week. Mm. It's one of my favorite shows. Um, I had a feeling... I had a gut instinct that Padma was fighting with Tom and Gail. And I can't tell you why I had this feeling. Tom and Gail are the two other judges on Top Chef. But, and I don't know if this is validating my feelings. Mm. Because let me tell you something. Padma is Top Chef. Like, I'm not, I don't know if the show can recover. TBH. Interesting. Padma. I mean, people go on that show and reference Padma like she is the end all be all. And so I understand why she would want to leave, but I can't imagine that anyone would want her to. I don't know. It just seems very odd to me because, you know, she does it once a year for maybe like two months i i mean obviously i'm sure she's an executive producer on the show there must be other work that goes into it um Mm -hmm. but i get the sense that there was some first of all this was announced on a friday Mm -hmm. um it was announced bravo didn't follow up on their their like social media posts until hours later which gate was giving me we don't know how to handle this we don't know what to do instead of posting about it pretty immediately or at the same time as she did um it was she doesn't reference any you know she doesn't reference tom or gail on in her statement not that she has to but i mean mm-hmm. mm, I, don't yeah, I get it something yeah, suspicious yeah something fishy also typically not typically but a lot of the time they'll go on watch what happens live as a threesome and do their interviews together and this year that didn't happen um i don't know i don't know i don't know but interesting i feel like something happened and padma said fuck you all i'm leaving um padma come on the pod i need to know what happened yeah i don't i honestly don't know i don't know how they could move forward tba they're gonna have to right. but like padma is top chef mm-hmm. anyways crazy you should watch top chef it's a good show is it i it's, mean yeah people seem to love it it's excellent it's been on for 20 seasons damn and they just did, this season they did all stars like of all international versions too it was great oh, it, wow. it's not over yet but you know right 
Anyways, um, that's going to do it for the Pop Culture Pop-Up. We'll be back next week with more Pop Culture Cheese Man. Julie, do you have a Latinx spotlight for us? I do. This past week was the Los Angeles Latino International Film Festival. Um, great things were happening. They premiered the Flaming Hot movie. They premiered the upcoming season of With Love on Amazon Prime. Two things that you should absolutely keep in mind going into, I believe they both premiere in June. So going into June, you know, we talk about all of the this Latino representation and everyone's always harping on about how we don't get proper representation and there's no shows with Latino leads. Well, I'm giving you two things with Latino leads. Flaming Hot is going to be on Hulu with Love. Season one is phenomenal. Season one of With Love is great. That's going to be on Amazon Prime. Season two, I think, premieres later this month. So keep that in mind because then things get canceled then i get upset then everyone's like why is julie screaming at us i don't know guys maybe because i recommend all these shows and you know adrian's still watching season one of succession so why don't we as a group come together to watch these shows with proper beautiful latin representation please please I watched the first season of With Love, by the way. Did you like it? Did you enjoy it? I thought it was think? excellent. It's so good. It was so good. Such also, good the episodes of Succession are long. They are. And they you are. have to pay attention. You do. That is the thing with Succession. So... <laughs> I'm not taking it back. I'm watching it, though. <laughs> It's just slow. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You take your time. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's slow. Yeah. Thank you, Julie. I can't Thank wait you. to watch With Love Part 2, TBH. Mm, so excited. Um, Next up, we have some azúcar. I will go first. My azúcar this week is uh, we're celebrating 10 years of Hummingbird, the album by the lo- by local natives. Um, m- I don't know what I thought you were going to say. I was like, who's Hummingbird? <laughs> Sorry. The Hummingbird I just bought. Uh, oh. Local Natives released an album called Hummingbird 10 years ago, and uh, they're celebrating it with uh, performing the album in full in August at the Ford Theater here in Los Angeles. And Jaime and I have tickets, and I cannot wait. Oh, that album sad. is spectacular. Um, mm-hmm. And um, yeah. I'm just I I've been listening to it a lot um recently because you know we're going to the show so I'm trying trying to refresh mm-hmm. my memory uh and it's just a it's so it's really really good so mm-hmm. um hummingbird by local natives check it out I love that um mm-hmm. what are you gonna say to me? I was just gonna say Julie do you have your ask I don't do oh. I usually ask you for this I don't remember I don't know okay go ahead (laughs) it all leaves my brain as soon as we stop recording Mm -hmm. um my azúcar my azúcar my azúcar give me a minute it's gonna come to me um it's been a good week it's a good so it should be easy to come up with something it's been a good what have i done um you know what my azúcar is hosier it, it was a great meeting him. It brought me so much joy. Um, I'm very appreciative of the time that he gave his fans. It's a very nice thing to do. I cannot wait to listen to his album. Um, because I'm in his PR list, I've gotten the name of all the tracks and I read all the lyrics. And let me tell you something. These songs are going to break us apart. They're going to break us open and they're going to do some healing. And I can't wait. Um, I think Hosier is great. So if anyone has an extra ticket to a Hosier concert, I am willing to travel. So wherever you are, D, do you have tickets to the to the Hosier concert? Um, yeah, I would love to go to one of his shows, but of course, um, it didn't work out for me with Troubadour show, and it didn't work out for me with his big tour either. So Hosier is my and i'm still listening to francesca like you wouldn't believe it spotify at this point is going to be like are you okay are you okay because you're really playing the shit out of the song so 
Um, yeah, that's my asuka this week. I love that. Okay. Well, Hoisier, Hoisier, we did come it. on the pod. Come on the pod. Okay, uh, one small announcement. We will not have an episode next week. Um, sorry about that in advance, um, but just FYI, uh, no new episode next week. We'll be back in two weeks, which is, um, not sure when that is, but we'll be back, um, you know. Do the math, guys. I don't know. Figure it out. Yeah, figure it out on your own. The 19th yeah. of June? I'm not too sure. Um, anyways, um, don't be don't send us hate mail if you don't see a new episode next week we already we told you we told you we've announced it um and that's gonna do it for us we'll be back next in two weeks with more cheese man um make sure that you follow us on instagram on tiktok on twitter at you me and cheese man make sure you visit our website you me and cheese man.com sign up for the newsletter uh and check out all of julie's wonderful reviews on the website make sure that you uh give us a review rate us uh you know a nice little just a review is good anywhere you listen to us that would be greatly appreciated on apple podcasts uh you can just type a like this you can say that whatever mm-hmm. you want to say um make sure you share this with somebody um and if you do all that then we can keep coming back mm-hmm. uh and yeah uh I, uh, what else do I say? I don't remember what I say. Oh my gosh. Um, and that's it. <laughs> that's it. But until then, yeah. <laughs> make sure you have lots of love, lots of peace, and most importantly, lots of chisme in your life. Bye. Bye.